Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're doing an update on my Apple Watch Series 4 review that I did a few weeks ago because Apple just turned on their new ECG feature that measures your heart rhythm that is different than the heart rate and this feature is unique to the Apple Watch Series 4 and what it's designed to do is detect a condition called AFib that puts people at a greater risk of stroke and for a lot of people they don't know that they have this condition in the first place so the watch might actually be a means of saving lives because people that just randomly try out their heart rhythm feature might actually discover they have a condition. So we're going to get it working right now. I actually haven't started the process yet of measuring my ECG. Uh, so we're going to do that here on the phone and kind of walk through the steps to get it working so you can see how to make it work on your particular device. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the watch with my own funds along with the phone that will be uh, used as part of this. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how this works. Now the way you activate this feature is to first make sure that your watch and your phone is up to date. So get those updates installed first. After that, you go over to the health app and you can see we've got this option here to set up the ECG app, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to tap on that. And what will happen now is it will ask for my birthday. So I'm going to put that into the phone right now and get going. Uh, the next step here is to get some information about what it does and it's telling you exactly what it's looking for and whether or not it's going to detect that atrial fibrillation issue which is also known as AFib and we'll click continue here and it's also going to tell us the kinds of things that we might see. A sinus rhythm is a result that means the heart is beating in a uniform pattern. Uh, an AFib result means that it's not beating in a regular pattern and we should get looked at there. And it's also going to measure a low or high heart rate or it might come back as inconclusive. Now one of the things that's important to note here is that this does have regulatory approval here in the US but it's a different type of regulatory approval than what you might have with a certified medical device. So the thing they hook you up to at the doctor's office is more accurate perhaps than uh, what this is going to be. So if you're not feeling well or feel like something's not right, don't rely on the app to make your health decision. Go to the doctor where they have much more uh, you know, accurate tools to make a more conclusive de decision as to what your condition might be. All right, next it looks like we're getting some disclaimers about some of the things that it can't detect, including a heart attack, blood clots, or a stroke, or other heart-related conditions. So this is specifically an AFib detector uh, and nothing more, and they want to make sure that you're aware of that. All right, so now it looks like we're ready to take our first ECG. So you want to look for this little app icon on your watch. We're going to tap on that real quick. That's going to load up, and it's going to ask me to make sure that the watch is snug on my wrist, which I think it is. So let's hit OK here. And then we're going to, I guess, have to put my finger against the watch crown here because this is how it does the ECG. Uh, so there it goes. Now it's going to take about 30 seconds for this to run. So I'm going to let this go and uh, I will come back in a second when it's done. All right, so it is now done and it looks like the result is that I have sinus rhythm, which means that it did not detect anything out of the ordinary here. It's going to give me some additional information about what it detected and the fact that I do need to call uh, emergency services if I'm not feeling well despite this result. I'm going to click on done here because it looks like if we go back to the phone, I can get a little more information about what it just discovered. So let's load up the phone and see what we can get out of the health app now. All right, so after I completed the test, I got this waiting for me on my phone. I clicked on done and uh, unfortunately the recorder wasn't going, but basically that gets you uh, up and running. And now if you go back to your uh, health app on the phone, uh, you'll now see this information appearing with some of your other heart data. So if I go back here to uh, heart at the uh, lower portion of the screen there. Uh, you can see the heart rate that it's been measuring all the time, but now I can uh, jump into the electrocardiogram information and dig a little deeper into things. So that test there at the top was the one that we just ran. So if I tap on that, we can uh, get a little bit more data about when it was started, when it finished, uh, what hardware I was using at the time. And then it looks like I can also export a PDF to my doctor 
uh, which gives her the entire uh, scope of my uh, ECG as it ran. So they might be able to do some additional diagnostics from this if you were having some kind of issue. So that's pretty cool that you can do all this. You could just hit the share button there and email it out if you want. Now this test that we just ran does not run automatically. It only runs when you initiate it on the watch and then hold your finger to the crown for 30 seconds to get the reading. But the heart rate sensor can also detect irregularities, uh, but it won't be as accurate as the ECG. But nonetheless, it might be helpful to have that because if you are having an irregular heartbeat, you can then go in and run that ECG or seek out medical attention. And inside the Apple Heart or the Health app in the heart section, uh, you'll see an option for irregular rhythm notifications. And if you go into that and click on set up notifications, uh, what this will do is send you a warning when the heart rate sensor notices something out of whack. So I've got to put my date of birth in here again. And then it also is asking me if I've ever been diagnosed with AFib before. And I have actually been diagnosed with it. I have an occasional form of it that usually comes with a big thump that I can feel uh, in my chest. I've been diagnosed, I'm treated, everything is fine. Uh, it's not really life-threatening for me at the moment, but it's something I have to keep an eye on. But when I click yes to this, uh, it wouldn't let me continue because I think it's designed for people that uh, have not been diagnosed to maybe nudge them into getting treatment. But for people that have the condition, it's not accurate enough to say whether or not you're in AFib. So I'm going to lie to it and just say no. So now it's going to give me some additional information about what it's looking for. It's going to, again, check my heart rate to determine if I'm having an irregular rhythm. It's going to do this when I am still to ensure a more accurate reading. So if my heart rate is beating faster perhaps than it should when when I'm sitting down and relaxed, that might be an indicator that something isn't right. So I'm going to click continue here, and it's going to give me a few more things about the heart attack and the uh, AFib not being accurately detected with this particular thing. And we'll click through the rest of these and go on from there. We'll turn on notifications now. And I now should be all set to go, and hopefully I'll never get one of those notifications. It also apparently keeps track of how many times it happens too, so uh, that is pretty helpful. So there's a lot of cool stuff here that uh, you can do with your Apple Watch. Now the uh, heart uh, rate issue, the thing we just activated, works on prior versions of the watch. I think everything after Series 0, so beginning with the Series 1 watch moving forward. The Series 1 was the second edition of the Apple Watch. The ECG that we just did with the uh, crown and the heart rhythm sensor, that is only available on the Apple Watch Series 4. That's the big feature that they implemented with the new watch. So if you don't have a Series 4, you can't do the ECG, but you could probably get that heart rate component to work. So I'm very excited about this. I think this is going to help a lot of people. I'd love for you to get it activated and run a test every once in a while just to make sure that you know whether or not uh, you have this condition because people can get strokes from this even at a young age, especially if they don't know that they have AFib. And this is a great way to very quickly figure out if you do. So run it every month or so, just something to keep an eye on how you're feeling. If you're not feeling well one day, maybe a little tired or run down, uh, just run the ECG and just make sure everything is okay. It's painless. It doesn't cost anything. It's part of the watch that you already purchased. And I think it's a great way to uh, keep track of a health condition that could be life-threatening. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, this is Lon Sivan. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.